Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Iron Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, we speak to Freetown's first elected female mayor, Yvonne Aki Sawyer, is in Paris ahead of the Women for Climate Conference. She tells me more about her hopes for the transformation of the Sierra Leone Leonean capital. And one of Senegal's biggest political parties don't have a candidate running in this weekend's vote. Dakar's former mayor, Khalifa Sal, and Karim Wad, an ex-minister of the son of former President Abdullah Wad, were both barred from running. Their supporters accused President Maki Sal of being behind their exclusion. But first, in vulnerable communities around the world, women are often disproportionately impacted by climate change. And yet, far fewer female voices feature in high-level negotiations on how to tackle the problem than of men. African female environmental leaders are pushing for this to change with particular urgency. Some analysts reckon that about seven out of ten of the world's most climate vulnerable nations are on the continent. Now, this week, Paris hosts the Women for Climate Conference. That aims to highlight the role that women play in creating a sustainable future. And one of this year's guests is Sierra Leone's mayor of Freetown, Yvonne Aki Sawyer. Yvonne, thanks so much for coming in to see us. Now, I know that you've had a really long flight and you're up super early on Thursday for the beginning of the, of the conference, so it is much appreciated. But for you, starting off, the, the whole premise of the meeting is looking at the role that women can play in conversations about climate action. Why do you think that that is particularly important? Does it, whether the conversation comes from men or women, does that affect outcomes in any way? I think it does. Um, as you rightly said, women are disproportionately affected. In many cases, women are the ones who, as in the case of Sierra Leone, case of Freetown, women are the ones who um, have to deal with the aftermath, both in terms of loss of life, in terms of loss of property, because of the key role that they play. But very often, um, you, you don't see the women. This conference that's uh, happening tomorrow highlights the role that women play, whether you're elected of officials like myself. There are a number of female mayors from around the world who will be at this event, but also business leaders. The point that's being made is that women have a lot to offer. We make up over 50% of the population. Um, and when it comes to vulnerabilities, because very often women are disadvantaged for a host of different reasons, um, it, it's the disadvantaged are more, more often going to be those who suffer the most when there is some form of disaster. When it comes to Freetown, Sierra Leone now, you spoke about vulnerabilities in Africa, but Sierra Leone now is actually recorded or um, regarded as the second most vulnerable country, um, vulnerable to natural disasters. So there is, there is real, a real sense of urgency um, for the voices of Africans and particularly the voices of women right across the stage, right across the world, um, to be engaged. Women are already doing masses when it comes to climate change. On a personal level, um, I've come, I've run for office, I've been mayor for nine months. My single reason for running was the environment. Mm -hmm. And th that takes me into um, some of the focuses that, have, that you become very well known for in Freetown, which are um the uh, drainage and uh i believe it is infrastructure is also something that you're very big on um why are these specifically some of the priorities that you're pushing for um august 14th 2017 there was a landslide in freetown over a thousand people died in a couple of minutes um that followed years of having flooding and these aren't unusual features um of cities the landslide definitely much more so, but it reflects what's been going on with the climate. And that's from us as a city um, being a recipient of the effect of global phenomena, but also local phenomena. So the, the Transform Freetown framework, which is the platform through which we are looking over the course of the next three years to address our most pressing problems has four areas of focus. The number one is resilience. Very closely tied to that, of course, is human development, followed by healthy city and urban mobility. But on that point of resilience, 
our number one priority within that is environmental management. Our city is growing at an alarming rate. We had a population of 1,055,964 in 2015 when the census was last done. But according to the World Bank Syrian Economic Outlook, our city's population is growing now at 4.2% per annum. So by 2028, we could be almost 2 million people. That pressure of rapid urbanization in the absence of infrastructure, in the absence of the regulatory framework, which we're looking to now put in place, has meant that the natural, the natural uh, uh, action of people looking for a place to stay is to go for the course of least resistance, mm -hmm. indiscriminate cutting down of trees. And Freetown is beautiful. We're on the hills, a plain, and then the Atlantic Ocean. Mm -hmm. But that also creates, creates almost... Um, nowhere to go mm -hmm. because you've got this mountain range around so trees are being cut down so, increasing so how, ero how do you, erosion how do you work on engagement though with with all these pressures and and um the the poverty that we know that a lot of people in the city deal with how do you get people to see in, um, environmental action as being a priority as well as getting through the day and it's community ownership so um i it, during the Ebola outbreak, um, I served as the national um, director for planning at the National Ebola Response. And if I learned one thing, I think many people would be true to say, if I learned one thing about the Ebola outbreak, it was the success when you're making huge change that's affecting lives um, of populations, community ownership is key. So in my first three months, we engaged 15,000 people in the city. Mm -hmm. That was 15,000 people direct, face to face, but we're constantly engaging through the media. And one of the things that made a huge impact, I mentioned the fact the flooding has been a feature. The landslide was particularly dramatic, but in the first few months, the gutters, the waste management that you talked about, yes, that was where you saw it. Um, because as soon as I came in in May, the very first thing I started to work on with communities through conversation was flood mitigation. And it was really successful. We did simple things, um, but we did things which were data driven. So Yvonne, I, I'm so sorry to cut you off because unfortunately we have uh, run out of time, but we'll be very interested in following. I believe on online it's possible to follow some of the conversations that are going to be had Absolutely. at the Women for Climate uh, conference tomorrow. Thank you so much for making the effort to come in and good luck uh, on Thurs at Thursday's meeting. Thank you very much. Well, a quick look at other news. South Africa is channeling almost $5 billion of emergency funds into the state utility firm ESCOM. Its bailout will come over three years to give it time to implement a restructuring plan that will split it up into separate entities. The announcement was made during the unveiling of this year's budget and a week after the country faced a week of power cuts as ESCOM's overstretched electricity grid struggled to cope with demand. President Cyril Ramaphosa has made reforming the company a priority. It's $30 billion worth of debt poses a direct threat to the South African economy. And Zimbabwe has said that its fragile bond note will no longer be pegged to the US dollar. The country doesn't have an official currency and has been using the bond note since 2016 to make up for a shortage in foreign currency. The quasi currency was supposed to have been on par with the dollar, but in reality now trades at about a quarter of its value. By formally devaluing the bond note, the central bank is hoping to stabilize the market and end the black market trade of the dollar. The country's currency crisis has fed into economic instability and policies brought in by President Emerson Manangagwa to try and tackle the uncertainty led to protests in January and have fed into growing discontent amongst many Zimbabweans. Now, Senegalese President Macky Sall is widely expected to win his re-election bid in this weekend's polls. Some opposition figures have accused him of being behind the exclusion of two of his biggest opponents from the vote. Our correspondents sent us this report. Senegal's former president, Abdoulaye Wad, hoped his son would follow in his footsteps. And with his son Karim barred from running, he's vowed to stop the election. As a result, one of the country's major political parties has no candidate in the presidential race. 
We believe the system is rigged. Whatever happens on the evening of February 24th, Macky Sall will proclaim himself elected in the first round. So we will not participate in this charade. We want to show Senegal and the whole world that Macky Sall has decided to steal our consciences. Khalifa Sall, former mayor of Dakar, is another opposition figure barred from running. But he formed an alliance with another candidate. His supporters are fully involved in the campaign, but they accuse the government of sidelining him. Our democracy is no longer the democracy we used to show the world. Today we have a leader who thinks he can have all the powers, that he can do whatever he wants, so long as it strengthens his power and allows him to ensure that he's re-elected, without glory or any risk. The Minister of Communication rejects such charges. The debate on Karim Wad and Khalifa Saul is no longer a political debate because the matter has been settled by the justice system and we haven't done anything to eliminate anyone from running. And that's the fight against impunity, the fight against injustice and social inequalities. Four candidates are facing President Macky Sall. Three of them have never run a presidential campaign. Well, that's it for Iron Africa for now. Thanks for joining us and do so again if you can. Take care.